Someone once said, the glory of God is a man fully alive. Are you fully alive? We all want to live for as long as possible. None of us want to die. So we need to know how we can live fully here on this earth and for the life to come. Let's look at what Paul the Apostle says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. In the first verse, he says, And you were dead in your trespasses and sin. He says, We were removed from the life and the presence of God. That's what spiritual death is, to be separated from God. Then he goes on to say, In which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. Secondly, he says, we were rebellious with Satan and his followers. It says that we used to walk, not according to God's will, but following the course of this world and following the prince of the power of the air, which is Satan, and the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. So when he talks about in the course of this world, he's not just talking about this physical world, but he, he defines what the world is in 1 John 2.15. It says, Do not love the world, nor the things in the world. If, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the boastful pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away, and also its lusts. But the one who does the will of God abides forever. So the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life. And it says that we were rebelling against God. Thirdly, it says, among whom all once lived, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. So verse 3 talks about how we rebelled. By living in the, in the lusts or the passions of our sinful nature, and indulging the desires of the body and the mind. So, have you ever indulged in sin? You know, someone once said that we lose a hunger and thirst for God when we snack on the junk food of sin. That sin could be watching something in a movie that we shouldn't watch. It could be surfing on the internet somewhere we shouldn't go. It should be looking at someone the way we shouldn't look at. Or it could be anger, it could be lying, something that God doesn't want us to do. And it says, when we do this, we're by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. What does it mean to be children of wrath? Well, God is a holy God, and God hates sin, and he hates rebellion, and his wrath is against sin. And in fact, in one day, those who whose names aren't written in the Lamb's book of life, will be thrown into lake, the lake of fire forever. And to have God's wrath upon us is something that we do not want. But then there's two powerful words that comes in verse 4. It says, but God. Those two words change everything. It says, but God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So we were removed from God's presence in life. We were dead. We were rebellious with Satan and his followers. And now it says, we are raised with Christ. It says there's three things that God did for us. It says, even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. That's the first thing. The second thing, it says, by grace you have been saved. 
and raise us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ. Why did he do this? It says he loved us with great love, even when we were dead. And God being rich in mercy. So we see in this passage both God's wrath, his holiness and hatred of sin, but God being rich in mercy. And I know right now some of you do not feel loved. You don't feel deserving of God's love. You sense a lot of guilt. What God is saying right here is that he loves you. He made us alive together with Christ when he raised from the dead after dying for our sins. And he raises us with him. And he seats us with him in the heavenly places in Christ. Do you believe that? That not only when you were dead, God made you alive, but he raised you up, and then now you are seated with him in the heavenly places with Christ at the right hand of God. You know, that's where our position is in Christ, and this is by faith. So it says, we are raised with Christ. It says, so that in the coming ages he might show the measurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one can boast. So we have been redeemed. We have been restored and made ready for him. It says that it's not our good works that saves us, but it's God's grace. And it says both of these things, the grace we have been saved through faith, this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. The grace God gives us and the faith to believe that Jesus did these things are both a gift. You know, when a person is dead, there's nothing, humanly speaking, that can make that person alive again. So there's no way if a person is raised from the dead, that they'll be able to brag or boast that they were able to do it. So if there's a person who's on a, a life-saving heart machine and breathing machine, in, in a sense, they are totally dependent on that doctor and that machine to be made alive. But here's something far more supernatural and more real, is that God raised Jesus from the dead. And when he did that, he made us alive with him. And it says, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one can boast. So none of us can brag or boast about what God has done. So we've been raised with Christ. We've been loved. We've been made alive. We've been raised and seated with Christ, saved by his grace and faith alone, not our works. And we have been redeemed restored and made ready. For in verse 10, it says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. You know, another translation says, For we are his masterpiece. So God has made us, and he's created us to do good works. And it says God... Uh, has ordained already, preordained, the good works that we should walk in them. It's not we are saved by our good works. It's, sa we, it's we're saved and now we are empowered to do the good works God has planned for us. And some of us right now may not know what those works are. Some of us may be looking for a job. We're not sure what to do in our career or we're not sure what to do in our ministry. Well, this verse says, God's already planned it out. Let's just seek him and ask him what we should do. So we've been redeemed. You know, uh, something that's interesting, like I'd like to point out, is that in verse five, it says, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. So to be saved means to be made alive together with Christ. That's how to be fully alive. You know, this all makes me think of an illustration of what it means to be restored and made ready 
to be redeemed. What does that mean? Well, there's a story of a little boy. He had gotten a little kit to make a very intricate model sailboat. And this model sailboat, the, the sails could fold down and could fit into a bottle. And then with a string, the sails could come back up. And this was very intricate and something that he loved and he made with his own hands. And somehow it got lost or stolen and he couldn't find this bottle. And then one day he was looking on eBay and he found that exact model. And he could tell by his initials that he put in there that that was his. So he asked his parents to buy that, that toy boat sailboat for him and he got it back and so he said to the sailboat you you are mine twice i have made you and created you i had bought you and you were lost but then i had lost you and i found you again and i paid the price that's what jesus did when he redeemed us so we have been removed from god's presence and his life and we were dead. And we were rebellious along with Satan and his followers. But then God loved us. He made us alive together with Christ. He raised us with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places at the right hand of the throne of God. And he has redeemed us. He's restored us and made us ready as his masterpiece, his workmanship, so that we could be prepared and planned uh, and to, and prepare and do the planned work God has given to you. And that is how you are made fully alive through Christ.